Good morning, kitten. Did you sleep all right? I can't have my favorite test subject be sleeping uncomfortable. So, I made the best conditions for you to sleep in. I prepared everything in tip-top condition. A nice cozy blanket, a big pillow to cradle your head, beautiful scented candles, a dimmed light, some sleeping music, and of course, me spooning you. You did start getting a little restless though, so I came around and pulled you into my chest and held you there. And that was the majority of the night. So, as you were sleeping, I studied you. Thought about what I would do to you. Before I joined you in bed last night, I went back to the asylum and also went to a nearby drugstore to retrieve some old equipment. I thought I would use them for the experiments. I already prepared your breakfast earlier. Seems to be your favorite after I went through some of your files. And while you eat, I'll continue preparing the test we'll be doing today. Oh, don't be scared, okay? I'll be very careful and gentle. Oh, and I told you. I would only be doing a light test as a starter for these first few days. So don't worry a bit. If you do try to escape, I will find you no matter where you go, even if that means crossing the entire world. My grasp will forever be around you. Aside from that, now that you're finished eating, we can start. Come here, please. This is my little box of supplies. What do you want to start with? I have a test where I give you a tarantula bite to see how you react. This syringe with a random concoction I made, which should cure diseases, I remember? Or these goggles that electrocute your eyelids to increase your vision that I made. Whichever one you want to start with is fine with me. I'm open-minded. Why are you backing away? There's some more if you don't want those, little dove. I'm not crazy. Not compared to those other poor people in the asylum. Please don't say those mean things. I mean, unlike other people we hear about, I didn't drug your food or do anything bad to it. At least, I think so. If I did, it might have just been on accident. But that's besides the point. I didn't try, and I've cleaned all of these utensils very well. All you need to do is comply with me, and everything will be completely fine. So come back, please. Oh my, you're crying. You just want to go home. Oh, my sweet and adorable sparrow. You know I can't do that, right? That would simply put both of us in danger. Why are you doing this? You see, I'm doing this because I... Because, uh, um, I don't completely know, to be truthfully honest. It has been my entire life since birth. What I mean is that this is how my up bringing came to be, and so I grew up continuing it. Sure, I can postpone the test for now, I can tell you. So when I was a kid, my parents were scientific lunatics, from childbirth to the end of my years. No. No. 
I was born for that sole purpose. Mm -hmm. My siblings all died in the first few years other than me. So I was the main subject to many of their cruelties. Anything they wanted to test, they tested on me. And that's why my body may be a little dysfunctional. Anyway, I escaped from them after they went to a secret underground auction for high-class surgical equipment. There was even a Da Vinci machine there. Oh, sorry, sorry. Off, off track. Unluckily, I was taken by one of the bidders who kinda put me into his slave trafficking business. And when the police came to save us, I didn't know that there were just good people in this world. I mean, you gotta understand, I had my parents for a long, long time of my life, and then I had hard labor, which is a long, long time of my life as well. I didn't know what good guys were. I thought the police were just gonna put me into another slave trade. And so when they came over, I kinda escaped from them too. I didn't know what to do. Like I said, all I'd known for my life was hard labor and horrific scientific experiments that led to basically nothing. So I lived off of stealing food and taking scientific volunteers. It's just, you know, I couldn't help it. The tests were working so well that I couldn't let the people go. And they volunteered anyway. And so I thought I had the right to keep them. And sadly, that's when the police came in and I was sent to the mental ward. For some odd reason, I should have been killed. I mean, look at me now. I'm back to the tricks I used to do. I am a danger to the people of this world. And I do not know why I was selfish. I'm very sorry that I kidnapped you, puppy. Uh, no, um, hum human per person. You may leave, and I swear to you that I will not come after you. Is that all right? No, this this person is innocent. I kidnapped them. I'm the one who escaped from the mental ward. Please do not harm them. I'm guilty. Please take me. We're sorry that happened to you. He's going to be put back into the psychiatric facility with much, much more restrictions. Yes, we know about how much of a troubled childhood he had. Except we simply can't have people like that walking these streets. You really need to understand. 
sorry. I mean, take you as an example. Look what happened to you. We can't have other people in danger like that. Hopefully, he will change in the mental ward. But, seeing as he was there for a good amount of four to five years, I don't think he's going to ever change. Anyways, sorry again for this. You are safe now, away from that absolute lunatic. Except, I'll be back with your files and your lawyer for you guys to discuss. So, please, rest easy.